Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Blue Marble Geotalks Express. Um, today, uh, we're going to be exploring GeoCalc Online. Uh, my name is Sam Knight. I'm the Director of Product Management here at Blue Marble Geographics, and with me is uh, Jeff Hatzel. Hi, Sam. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. All right. So, Jeff and I are... Uh, practicing a lot of social distancing today. I'm at home in Maine and uh, Jeff is off in New York. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing this from afar. And the topic today is our new GeoCalc online uh, product, which is a new updated web service uh, on a, a service that we've been hosting for several years. Um, the GeoCalc online, uh, some of you may be familiar with it already. Uh, it's been up for uh, over two years now, pushing three years. Um, this is our uh, probably our, our second major update to uh, to this this group of tools. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of those functions. So we're going to be looking at uh, the online search capabilities, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the updated uh, lookups, how we can reach into this from other applications. And in particular, we're also going to be taking a look at our new uh, calculation tool that we're adding to this. this is a, a big new tool that we've uh, added to this web service. So the format of the uh, webinar today is going to be uh, very familiar if you've tuned into any Blue Marble webinars before. Um, all attendees are presently in a listen-only mode, and um, the, the questions panel, uh, which you typically see on the right-hand side of your screen, is how we'll be taking questions. Um, feel free to send any questions in while we're going, and we'll try to address those uh, as, as we're going and save a little bit of time at the end uh, to come back to any questions we didn't have time to tuck in uh, in the middle. And uh, lastly, the session is being recorded. So we're recording everything we're doing. Uh, we'll have this posted to our site uh, typically within a couple days uh, following the session. So Jeff, we have uh, some more some more big plans for GeoTalks coming up this year. We do, yeah. So um, what everybody's attending now is what we call a GeoTalks Express. Just a little, you know, quick one hour talk we've been doing uh, a couple times a month. Those are spun off from our annual GeoTalks. Uh, which is a larger um, full-day talk or web-based conference um, where we have presentations from Blue Marble employees, uh, users of our products. Uh, we'll discuss product news, um, some new tips and tricks, and everything Blue Marble and Blue Marble software related. Um, so that's always an exciting day. Um, this year will be in the end of January. Uh, so feel free to register on our website um, to get that on your calendars now. We also have um, the Academic Scholarship Program. So this is a $500 scholarship uh, that is awarded to a student who demonstrates um, proficiency essentially in their use of Global Mapper. Um, we will be taking applications, I believe that's open till the end of November. Um, so if you are a student or you have students who are working in Global Mapper and working on a project in Global Mapper, uh, have them check out the website page for the scholarship um, and they can submit their projects. Uh, I know every year, you know, those of us who review the submissions have a great time reading them um, and seeing how students are working in Global Mapper. So have your students get those in. Yeah, those are always a, a real pleasure to, to look through. Mm -hmm, definitely. We have some, um, some more upcoming training throughout the end of the year. Uh, some of you may know all of our training has gone remote, so everything is web-based. Uh, our last training class of the year, the Global Mapper session, will be um, essentially the first week of December, so technically starting November 30th. Uh, and then the week after that will be the LiDAR module session. So if you're someone who really wants to deep dive into all that Global Mapper and the LiDAR module have to offer, um, feel free to join us. You can check out the training page on our website for more information. And I think registration is still open for that. Um, I don't believe it's filled up yet. We'll also be hosting um, for the first time uh, in a while a public uh, geodesy and geographic calculator training course. So where most of our courses cover, cover Global Mapper, this will cover geographic calculator and how we apply geodesy and, and, and geodetic analysis to our real world and to our work environments. Uh, it'll be a two-day course um, towards the end of January, so January 20th and 21st, covering four two-hour sessions um, 
both in the morning and afternoon of each day. So if you're somebody who wants to learn more about Geographic Calculator, uh, I encourage you to attend that class. And Sam, I think you're going to be teaching that one, correct? Um, yeah, I'll be I'll be teaching that, and uh, uh, probably likely someone else. Uh, maybe that'll be you. Maybe that'll be somebody else. Whoever yeah, yeah, we'll see. Wants to join me for that. Mm -hmm. It's always a good time. Uh, we learn a lot. It's uh, it's very different from our uh, uh, global mapper classes, um, just because we spend a, a little more time on some some kind of higher level theory stuff in the in the geodetics. It's always a good time. Yeah. So as we um, get into things today now, uh, as Sam had mentioned, we're gonna talk about GeoCalc Online. So we'll introduce um, the tool, the site, um, and kind of start talking about everything that we can do on it, because it has a few different you know, main um, tools and bits of functionality that we can work with. So we'll talk about searching the registry, uh, you know, for certain definitions or, uh, you know, other other geodetic features. And then once we find those, how do we work with them and how do we interact with them? Um, maybe I need to dig into some parameters or think about sharing it or otherwise uh, viewing the definition. So we'll talk about different ways we can do that. We'll then look at the brand new point-to-point uh, -point calculator. So for those of you who use uh, Geographic Calculator Desktop, uh, this will be very similar to the interactive conversion job in the desktop app. So it's a great new functionality now right on the web uh, for, for kind of easy access for everybody. And then with time permitting, we'll go ahead, Sam mentioned, and take a look at how GeoCalc Online interacts with some of our other applications because some of those applications will hit GeoCalc Online to update uh, their registry and data source information. Okay, and uh, and as we're we're going along, I'm gonna we're gonna come back to this slide. Um, so, GeoCalc Online is is more than just a service that you can come to externally and and, and use to your research, do some basic calculations. Uh, we also have this in a a professional services installation of this, so we can we can work with you to install this within your own cloud tool environment. Um, so, keep that in mind as as we're going along. Um, if you see things like this and you and you say like, oh, it's a neat tool, but I'd really like to have this in our own corporate environment, uh, we're going to come back and talk about this a little bit uh, at the at the end of the presentation. So um, we're going to get started here in just a second. We kind of want to um, sort of feel out what uh, what our attendees are, uh, uh, what their experience is with uh, with our tools. Uh, we, we tend to have a lot of Global Mapper users come to our uh, geographic calculator uh, and uh, geocalc registry type type sessions. So we'd like to um, we'd like to just do a couple of quick polls so we can kind of feel out who our audience is today. Um, so I'm just going to launch that poll, and you should see that on your screen. If you wouldn't mind, just going ahead to click a few of those. There we go. We got a got a pretty good mix today. Got some global mapper users, we've got some, some LiDAR module users, and I'm just going to give that a couple more seconds. It looks like it's slowing down here. And five, four, three, two, one. There we go. All right, so we have a, a pretty heavy representation of global mapper users. That's not a big shocker to us. Uh, small contingencies of LiDAR module and uh, geographic calculator users and a couple of a uh, few folks that are uh, uh, right right fresh to us and uh, just just looking to see what we have I think here all right and if we could follow up with just one more uh, we'd like to know what uh, what general industries you're you're in um, just to let us know who are who our audience is here All right, pretty heavy in the survey and geomatics group. We can only have so many categories here in the poll, so uh, for, forgive us if this isn't super specific. All right, that one's slowing down pretty good. I'm gonna close that one off and share that back out. So it looks like about half of you are involved in surveying and geomatics, um, which is not, not a big shocker uh, whenever we talk about geocalc and, uh, and the, the desktop versions of calculator and such. Um, very, very popular in the surveying world. 
uh, a lot of engineers today, a lot of other today. I think that's uh, maybe a factor of our, uh, of our only having five options available to us, but uh, always, always interesting to know who we're talking to here. So here we are back at the GeoCalc Geodetic Registry. Um, so uh, like, we, like we mentioned at the beginning, the GeoCalc uh, Geodetic Registry has been available for over two years now, um, really getting closer to three years um, that, that it's been around. Um, what, this, uh, what this really is, is uh, at its core, it is a database. Um, so it has a database of our coordinate systems and it's the, it's the sort of master database that pours into all of our, our various products that deal with coordinate systems, which is all of them. And it provides a search portal, a lookup portal uh, for folks who choose to bring this inside their own environment. Uh, it allows them a, a, a place to store their uh, custom definitions, uh, their proprietary stuff that they don't necessarily want to get outside. Um, it allows a, a you know a flexible tool that you can that you can use if you're on a desktop computer, if you're on a laptop, if you're on a mobile device out in the field somewhere, and you just need to do some some quick research uh, in into your coordinate systems and the geodetic parameters that you're you're basing something on. Um, so the the start page here just gives you a little bit of a, a basic uh, description of what this is, and you'll see up in the top right you'll notice that I'm actually logged in right now. So um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna skip the skip the step of uh, logging in. Um, the accounts that we're using on here, uh, they are simply a Blue Marble website account. So if you've ever downloaded anything uh, from us, um, you already have access to this. Um, also, in particular, we're going to be talking a little bit about who has access to this right now. And, and right now, the short answer is everybody has access to everything we're going to see today. Um, and we're going to have uh, basically a sort of a, a large trial period of this. Um, to, uh, to let folks get out and uh, you know kick the tires of this thing and, and see if it's something that can uh, be useful to them in their their own environments and uh, eventually this will uh, move down to uh, uh, its own subscription or folks that have a, a subscription to some of our, our various software tools uh, will also have access to this um, so the uh, the, the start screen here, it's basically just some some quick explanations. And I think Jeff is gonna gonna take over here and tell us a little bit about working with the search tools. Now we are, um, I, before you start, Jeff, I, always, I just wanna mention this is, uh, we're we're flying live on the internet right here. And uh, every once in a while um, on a, when you're demoing a web service and everybody on the call is also poking that web service at the same moment, uh, interesting things can happen. So. We do have uh, some backup slides in case uh, in case we have some some network lag as I'm you know at both both hitting this site and, and streaming out and things like that. Uh, but uh, we're we're gonna be flying live without a net here on the on the web service. <laughs> yeah, good to mention, Sam. Uh, so the registry search page is where we go if we need to look up any sort of coordinate reference systems, coordinate transformations, or any other definitions that may be in our data source. And we have two main ways uh, to perform a search. So what stands out the most probably is the map right in the middle uh, of our screen. And the map search can be done one of two ways. You'll see right now we're using a match location option. Fairly straightforward, you click a point and when you perform a search, your search will be conducted based on that point. Once that search executes, we'll see all of the different types of uh, geodetic definitions available to us. We can expand any section. So for example, if we wanted to take a look at our geodetic coordinate systems, I can see now the full list of coordinate systems that are uh, valid in the region that I clicked. Uh, by default, they're sorted by um, increasing area of use. So we're looking at things that are the most specific to a given region. And then as you would increase through that list, we would get incrementally more global in nature. So that's how they're ordered by default. Uh, clicking on a uh, on the map using uh, the bounding box search. So if we draw a bounding box uh, on our map, we'll, we'll notice we get the bounding corners of that area. And again, the search will give us uh, a result based on uh, that region. So again, we get a similar list um, as before. Uh, we're just searching based on a different method. 
So let's, uh, we'll go ahead and dig into an object, but why don't we do that after performing uh, a filtered search? So let's search, so blue marble is located in the state of Maine. So why don't we search uh, for the word Maine? And we'll notice on, on the left-hand side be below our search areas, we have a variety of filter options. Um, so I could have chosen um, to search within a variety of parameters. Maybe I only wanted to search a certain geographic area or EPSG codes. I could use um, my object filters. If we expand that section, that will show me um, the option to include early bound systems if applicable or any detailed results. And then probably the most useful to us is our object type filter. And when this expands, you'll see some default results there as to what we're shown. Um, but we can turn those on and off and adjust those as needed. So maybe we're only looking for, you know, a projected coordinate system or whatever the case may be. Um, I could filter my results so that I only see those. But let's go ahead now and, and execute the, um, the main based search. And then uh, we'll go ahead and look at maybe a projected coordinate system. So this and, list uh, now, sorry, Sam, go ahead. I, I just wanted to jump in. Well, uh, we, we're seeing this late bound category here, and I just want to make sure folks understand what we're what we're talking about with those because we have the object filters over there as well. This is one of those things uh, where uh, uh, coordinate systems can have a couple different versions of them. Uh, a late bound coordinate system is one that does not have a datum transformation attached to it. Um, an early bound coordinate system is one that is a coordinate system and it has a default transformation to some other coordinate system pre-associated with it. Uh, and everything we're going to look at today is late bound because that is what our entire database is, is built around. The early binding function is one of those tools that is really suited towards a proprietary installation uh, where, where you might have this in your, in your own uh, cloud environment. Yep, exactly. And so let's, um, Let's go ahead and take a look at maybe just the first um, definition in this list. So when we click on the name of the definition, it brings us to uh, the information page. And as we scroll through this page, we'll see that we can drill down uh, into all the detailed parameters associated with uh, this definition. So if we needed to look at specifics um, regarding the projected coordinate systems parameters or um, certain parameters for the datum, uh, area of use and things like that, all of that is available to us uh, directly on this page. So we can really dig in and learn um, you know, anything we need to about the specific system. And let's just for a second, we'll go back to the top here and use the back to search results option because I want to highlight one of the other uh, functions from this page. So if we look at for on the right side of our, our results list here, these action buttons, uh, these actions, oh, it looks oh, like we sorry. may have been signed out. <laughs> That's okay. I, was, I sat still too long. <laughs> So when we get back to that page, um, what those actions allow us to do is to conduct a um, essentially a variety of different functions based on a source. So view definition obviously would be the same as just clicking on it like we just did. We then have these next three options here, and these are essentially different ways to format the data for sharing it. So if we click on print definition, um, what that's going to do is summarize things nice and neatly for us in a new tab um, so that's a little bit easier to be printed and shared. Now, whether you print that to PDF or paper, you know, whatever you do, the choice is yours, but a quick way um, to, to, to share that data there. What's probably more important to us under the actions is viewing it as a GML or a WKT. Um, very often when we're talking about a a coordinate system, we need to have it in a certain format. Um, WKT and GM, GML um, happen to be some of the more popular formats for storing uh, coordinate reference system information. And so you can always grab that directly from uh, GeoCalc Online by using those action buttons. So I think Sam's going to talk to us about the calculator, but before he does, it's worth noting that from the search tool here, you can also uh, set appropriate objects as the converter's source or target. 
So Sam will dig into that and we'll talk about why that might be useful, but you can imagine if we need to do a big search or a, a, a deep dive search for a certain system, I might wanna quickly use one of those options and populate uh, what I searched for in my calculator tool. Right, and so those are um, those are gonna be the, the primary new things that are uh, available here in the search tool. Um, the, the calculation tool has really just been added on. It's uh, in, in the, the uh, geographic calculator desktop application. Um, these are these are all in one in one package. The search kind of blends in with the calculation tools. It's all it's all kind of together. And here it's we went for the same sort of feel. So up at the at the top of the interface, if you're going straight to the calculator, you'll see it just right up there next to the search tool. Um, so if we click over to calculator. Um, this is uh, our point-to-point -point calculator, so this is going to do three things for us. Um, it's going to do uh, conversion operations, which are going to be things that are uh, covered under... Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it looks like uh, a couple of folks were having trouble uh, seeing the actions button pop up. I think that may be uh, a symptom of the browser uh, not... not uh, interacting with our, our web sharing uh, functions. I don't believe uh, that that should affect the others, but let me know if you don't see dialogues popping up as I'm, as I'm going on. Uh, there are a few things in, in uh, Windows and browsers that, uh, that just don't show up as we stream out on GoToWebinar, and that appears to, to maybe be one of them. Uh, it's, um, it's also so worth noting, Sam, sorry to cut you off, um, you will need to be signed into GeoCalc Online with your Blue Marble account to see the actions buttons work. So make sure you're yeah. signed in as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the you know there is a timeout on this. If you if you get up and walk away from this, you'll see uh, you know you come back about somewhere around 20 minutes, I think it is, um, where it will just ask you to to sign back in again, um, and you can you can get on with your conversions from there. So on the the calculator page here, you'll see uh, at the top of that you'll see uh, the three operations uh, that this can perform, and they'll they'll explain what those are in, in the text at the very top of the page. So a convert operation is going to cover uh, things like data transformations or reprojections between different coordinate systems. Um, so it's it's not just uh, necessarily a, a convert, but it is a convert as well as a transform type operation. Um, it takes one point uh, for input and it's gonna put one point for output. Um, the coordinate systems vary. They can be anything that we have in the database down here. And the key piece is selection of uh, the, the transformation. Uh, if you need a, a datum transformation or a coordinate transformation to get in between those two, um, how we make that selection that is dynamic between the input and the output systems that we have here. Um, so we're gonna start off with uh, just a, a simple conversion. And for those of you who are um, uh, geographic calculator desktop users, the coordinate system selection and the overall dialogue here should be a little bit uh, familiar feeling in its layout. Uh, to select a system, we're just gonna click on that system box and this will pop open a, a dialogue that is really designed to mimic um, the, the libraries that we have available in the desktop application. So if we expand down under um, geodetic or projected, you'll see all of these various categories down here. So these are uh, essentially a geopolitical organization um, organizing all of the things that are in the uh, in the database. So if we go down under the North America level here under geodetic, you'll see these three systems, uh, NAD27, NAD83, 1986, and Akutepec, 1935. So these are large regional systems that cover uh, large enough chunks of North America that they are regional systems. Anything more specific than that, um, if you wanna browse down under you know, specific countries, or in the case of the United States, uh, states within countries, you'll get uh, narrower and narrower areas of use. So for example, uh, NAT 83 2011 is a very, very common and popular uh, coordinate system uh, that we use here in the United States, but that designation does not exist in Mexico or Canada uh, beyond, beyond the United States borders. Um, so we have uh, the, the selection tools here. You'll see things like the EPSG code, uh, whether or not that is a deprecated system. Uh, we do have both um, valid and deprecated systems available. Um, signing in is uh, is required to access uh, any of the deprecated definitions. Um, for those of you not familiar with that term, um, when uh, coordinate systems aren't, uh, they're never just deleted, uh, we deprecate them so that they can be maintained for historical record, even if we're, we decide that those are no longer valid. 
Um, so if you if you have old work that, that you need to replicate by using something that is known to be invalid to undo a past mistake, that's what those, those deprecated systems are maintained for. And then lastly, whether or not those are usable. Um, so a usable definition is mathematically complete uh, or in the case of uh, transformations that require extra grids or things like that, um, uh, things such as some of the uh, national transformations that we use here in the US, um, uh, things like NTV2 in Canada, uh, the OSGB36 transformations for the UK and so on around the world. Um, some of those have dependencies and not all of them are necessarily available uh, in, in GeoCalc Online. Uh, everything that we have a source that we are allowed to share is found in GeoCalc Online. So I'm just going to grab onto NAT83 2011 here real quick and go back to my, uh, my conversion tool. Now we need to ideally give this a uh, coordinate uh, to, to do this work on. So I'm going to put in my, my trusty placeholder. This is, this is my ultimate sanity check coordinate that, uh, that we do everything on. And spatially where this is located is somewhere nearby us in the woods of uh, uh, here in Maine. Um, so 44 degrees, 70 degrees, uh, uh, 44 degrees north, long, uh, north latitude, 70 degrees west longitude uh, in NAT83 uh, 2011. So you'll see the datum populates under that. So this is a latitude longitude system based on the horizontal datum of NAT83 uh, National Spatial Reference System of 2011. Uh, our units are degrees, and in this case, we have uh, no vertical coordinate system uh, defined. We could add that on if we if we wanted to. Um, the transformation box in the center, uh, we're going to skip over for just a second, and we're going to go over here to the far side. So we're going to take a look at our output coordinate system, and let's say, for example, we wanted to uh, let's let's just convert this over to to WGS84. Um, we're going to take a look at the, the transform box a, a few different kinds. So we're going to say select transform. And what happens in this case is inside the database, there is only one way to connect the dots between those systems and get a valid transformation. If there's only one possible uh, way to get there, it will simply toss that into the box for us. If there's more than one way to get there, um, then we have some choices that we're going to have to make. So to, uh, to connect the dots in between uh, different systems, and let's, uh, let's just take an example here. I'm gonna go to um, North America, NAD27. And if we select that transform, we'll notice there's also only one way to get there. And in this case, it's a chain of five different things. This is the uh, NADCON5 transformation, the, the latest transformation. Uh, for moving between systems from uh, the NGS, the National Geodetic Survey here in the United States. Now, in these cases, it's nice and simple because there's only one way in the database to get between those things. So what's gonna happen if we move between uh, systems that have other options? So to do this, I'm gonna go and grab onto our older uh, NAT83 1986 uh, realization. So moving between NAD83 1986 and NAD27. We have multiple options to do this. And so you'll see, I'm just going to simply click on the, the all category. We can break those down into different subcategories if we want. And you'll see there's a combination of uh, direct uh, methods to get there uh, and also two-step transformations to get there uh, where we interrelate other datums. Now, all of these are, are found in the database. It will basically dynamically find uh, which way to, to get into those and uh, how to best connect those dots. These will be sorted uh, by increasing uh, uh, accuracy rating. So uh, that, that's a goofy way to say that a little bit. With each of these transformations, there is an accuracy rating. So we want what we want is small numbers. We're, we're looking for uh, uh, the, the tightest accuracy we can get. Um, really, the accuracy rating in, in the way we talk about transformations is really a, a statement of how much wiggle or slop there is in a given transformation. So bigger numbers are bad, smaller numbers are good. Um, so we, we sort these out based on the combination of numbers that we have and uh, we're sorting those as such. 
if we want to get into the the nuts and bolts of these uh, any any of these entities this is where we would want to be uh, working in some of the search tools to make sure that we know exactly what's going on in here um, we have all the EPSG codes to very quickly uh, get those things out there um, and if we grab onto one of these and take that back to the main screen that's going to dump us into the, uh, uh, the, the transformation box in the middle now to add some complexity here you'll see we have a field at the top that we can enable time dependent transformations and when we toggle time dependent transformations on uh, what's going to happen here is we light up a new date field so we, we actually enable an epic uh, for uh, for conversion as well so in the case of applying a date to some of these that's going to light up additional transformation options uh, for those that have uh, time capable transformations um, in the database right now we have two methods of uh, datum transformation that support uh, dealing in epics uh, one is a 14 parameter uh, it's called a 14 parameter helmer transformation and for those they happen at a singular point in time so uh, to make that simple both of the dates have to be the same so there's a date field here on the source port uh, source point coordinate system on the left and on the target point coordinate system on the right there's also a date uh, for a 14 parameter method to come up uh, those need to be exactly the same if we have differing dates on there there's another system uh, that uh, that we can get into i'm just going to leave these the the same for now and we'll see what uh, what comes up here so i'm going to go to select my transformation and we'll see uh the the same list of uh, of transformations uh available for for this one um, the nadcon 5 category is in the center here as well and what I'm going to do is change my, my output coordinate system to one that is actually time capable. So I'm going to go back down under United States. I'm going to grab NAT 83 2011. So NAT 8386 to NAT 83 2011 with our time capable transformations available. And you'll see a new category light up on, uh, on the horizontal transformation picker. So this category is going to light up. You'll see there is no EPSG code. Um, this is a, an HTTP uh, transformation. Um, so HTTP is a kit available from the NGS um, that, uh, that produces the, the results here for us. Um, the, the dates are factored into this. So these are the, the epic dates that will be fed into the, the HTTP kit. Um, as such, there, uh, there's, there's not really any parameters uh, to look at with this. The, the date is the parameter. And when we select that, come back to the main screen, it will tell us which systems we are going from, uh, which we are going to, and the method that we're uh, using. And in this case, it's going to be HTTP at these particular uh, epic dates. Um, in the case of a 14 parameter uh, transformation, if we're using systems that are either based in, say, uh, Europe has a number of 14 parameter transformations uh, for, for various systems there around ETRS 89, uh, Australia has a number uh, available as well uh, to uh, GDA 2020 uh, and some of the, the other uh, regional uh, systems there uh, between things like ITRF. Um, those, those systems are all um, singular date. So you just need, simply need to make sure that your epic date uh, matches on, on both of those sides uh, to get the, the other type of time capable coordinate systems out. Um, uh, before I go on, I'm going to uh, stop and take a look at some of the questions that have been coming in. We've got uh, a, a couple questions about the, the conversions. Um, let's see, Benjamin is asking, um, is this similar to the NOAA NGS coordinate conversion and transformation? Um, and the, the answer to that is it is if you're using um, the methods that come from those, those particular toolkits. Um, so in the case of the older uh, NADCON uh, transformations, um, that you'll receive identical results if you're using something like uh, CoreCon or NADCon. Um, if you're using the modern NCAT tool online um, and you're using the NADCon 5 transformations available there, you should see identical results there as well, as long as you're obviously matching up things like uh, decimal precision uh, in, in, your, uh, in your transformations. Um, someone is asking, um, uh, can the point-to-point -point conversion 
uh, do a uh, 100 million point cloud data at one time? And uh, the answer to that is no. This is uh, this is simply a single point tool. Um, this is our our first foray into uh, bringing our geodetic calculators uh, online um, and and putting those out in a more accessible tool. So this this tool is uh, simply for single point converters. Um, that's why we're calling it simply the point to point conversion. Um, if you wanted to, to key in 100 million points, uh, you're, you're welcome to do so, but uh, it would probably take you a while. Um, let's see, Stephen is asking, um, how well do your HTTP transformations match the NGS HTTP transformations? Um, and the, the answer to that is we are doing HTTP transformations here. So we have uh, all of the, uh, the, the local uh, tables and files that those methods are built on as well are built into this behind the scenes. So we directly do our quality control against uh, the HTTP uh, software itself. Um, so assuming that you, again, put in the, the same dates, uh, corresponding systems on, on either side, um, and the same decimal precision, um, you should receive identical results uh, between, those, between those two systems. Sam, we had a good um, a good generic question come in that maybe it's a good time to address. Somebody asked, who's eligible to use the calculator tool online and how do I get a Blue Marble account? Okay, um, getting a Blue Marble account um, is uh, simply as easy as uh, when you when you see this uh, sign in tool up here, um, you, you can click right on that and there will be a, a registration link. Um, anyone is eligible uh, for a Blue Marble account. It's, uh, it's just simply a website account. Um, if you are uh, associated with an order um, for our, our various software tools, uh, you know, Global Mapper, or Geographic Calculator, or anything like that, um, if you are associated with a, a purchase order or something like that, chances are you may already have an account uh, you, if, you, if you don't know it. Um, there are, you know, we have uh, account recovery options and things like that. Um, if, if you've you know, forgotten your password, a lot of people create accounts and then, you know, maybe don't use it for a while. Um, for, forget that they've got it there and, and so on. Um, but anyone is eligible for this. Um, if you are a part of a, say like a corporate order uh, where somebody else has done all the, the purchasing and downloading and so on, um, if you sign up with your corporate uh, credentials, um, you, you can get yourself uh, linked to those. Um, that will be more important a little farther down the road. Um, but any anyone is available uh, for, for uh, using this tool right now. Uh, I, was, did you have a third piece of that question, Jeff? No, I think that was just a two-parter. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's um, good. Let's see. I, and then uh, uh, I'm going to go back and hit hit one more here. Um, uh, how do we convert uh, spheroid-based Everest 1830 uh, to WGS84 uh, using GeoCalc? So that would be a um, uh, Everest 1830 is a particular ellipsoid. Um, so what we would need to do is use a coordinate system in here. We would need to uh, get down under either geodetic uh, or projected systems that are based on that uh, Everest 1830 uh, ellipsoid. Um, now I'm going to branch out here, and if I remember properly, Everest 1830 is the common uh, ellipsoid that is used around, I want to say India, if I'm, if I'm remembering. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, maybe the Indian 1954 or the Kalyanpur 1975 systems. This is a great chance for us to go and try out our search and see what we've got in there. What's happening to me? Ah, there it is. There's my I neglected to turn on the ellipsoid filters. So this is a, a good moment to talk about the default filters. So by default, uh, the search tool uh, goes for coordinate systems, uh, basically horizontal and vertical coordinate systems and transformations. If you're looking for something uh, particular like an ellipsoid or a horizontal datum, we need to toggle those extra pieces on using the object type filter. So let's go ahead and uh, fire off that, uh, that search again. There we go. So we'll see uh, ellipsoids uh, that contain Everest. So there's uh, a few different uh, Everest 1830 uh, adjustments uh, that are, are found in the ellipsoids. 
and uh, you can also uh, find that in some horizontal datums. Um, these are some uh, going to be some academic ones. You'll see a few of these that say simply not specified. So these are more of a generic um, datum, um, but there are going to be um, uh, other other datums that that use that inside. Let's search. I'm going to search India, and I believe. Um, that in some of these systems like uh, Indian 1960, Indian uh, 1975, and so on, these are all available uh, for uh, different regions. And this is a case where if you're doing a little bit of research, you can hop into a particular datum, um, find uh, things like its identifiers to see how this is identified in various software databases, um, where its definition history comes from in say the, the EPSG, uh, you can very frequently find some notes about uh, what, part of the, what part of the world that is, uh, that is used in. Um, these things can all help you dial it in, um, say searching for uh, coordinate systems based on some of those ellipsoids. Once you figure out exactly which uh, specific either geodetic system or which projected system you wanna use, then you pop that right into your converter and, uh, and, and you're off and going. Um, I, I know particularly with Everest 1830, there's a whole lot of them. Um, looks like uh, your follow-up question there, um, saying it's in uh, one of the modified, um, Everest 1830 modified, one of the various uh, parameters, uh, uh, sets of parameters uh, from a realizations over, over different periods in time. Um, you just need to make sure you're, you're matching up the, uh, the ellipsoid uh, with uh, the right part of the world, and that can start you down the path of, of making sure you've got the right uh, geodetic system or projected system uh, for, for working with. Um, so there's a, a good, good real-world example for us. Um, real quick, I'm just going to finish up here uh, with uh, forward and inverse, uh, talking about these real quick. So if we take a look at um, forward and inverse, these are functions that relate to distance and azimuth between points uh, uh, through space. So across the surface of the datum uh, that we're working on. So I'm going to come back to my my placeholder coordinate here. Whoops. So 44 degrees north long, uh, latitude, 70 degrees west longitude, and uh, I've got NAT 8386 over here. I'm just going to go ahead and get that on both sides of the operation here. Um, forwards and inverses do need to be on exactly the same datum. Otherwise, the calculation just doesn't make sense. You've got to be on, on one singular surface to do that distance calculation. Uh, in the center of the, the dialogue here, you'll notice that the transformation box has gone away. And this is replaced now with a method and a distance and an azimuth. So this is going to be where um, we, we pipe in things like the distance. So I'm going to say we're starting at 44 north, 70 west, and I'm going to walk away from that point uh, by 500 meters. And let's head northeast from there. I'm going to go at an azimuth of 45 degrees. And the method is the path that we're going to follow here. So the, the geodesic is a great circle distance, uh, shortest distance between any two points on, on the ellipsoid. Uh, the RUM is uh, more of a common navigational tool where you hold a fixed azimuth uh, between the, the two points that you're going between. Um, so a, a singular compass bearing or a, a constantly varying compass bearing, but also the shortest distance uh, between, your, between your start and your, and your finish point. Um, when we do a calculation on that, You'll see that comes out on the, the other side of the screen, and we have our ending location. Uh, the inverse is just the other way around from that. So if we toggle this on to inverse, uh, our start point and our end point uh, will be on uh, still in, in their same places, but the center of this will be our output. So let's let's change this up to, I'm going to make this a nice even number here. Uh, so we're going to go from 4470 to 4569. Uh, and when we calculate that, we'll see that we're going a lot farther away, uh, in this case, in, in terms of meters. And it will calculate the azimuth and the back azimuth between those between those two points. Uh, the back azimuth um, is not very familiar to, to some folks, uh, but the back azimuth is essentially the long way around the planet. Um, so if you're going to take either the shortest distance between those two points, the back azimuth is if we go the other way around, 
uh, how do we get back to that, that starting point uh, after a long trip. So right now, those are the, the three main functions that we've added to the, the calculator tool here on the, the GeoCalc, uh, GeoCalc Geodetic Registry or GeoCalc Online. Um, these are going to be available again to anyone uh, for, for a limited time. Um, you just need a Blue Marble uh, website account uh, to access these tools. Uh, eventually, we are going to move this into uh, being linked to uh, uh, geographic calculator uh, subscriptions. Uh, so folks that have access to that, uh, they're going to have access to that um, for uh, 2021. Um, all of 2021, we're basically doing a, a long trial of this, uh, of this tool. Um, if you need help uh, getting a Blue Marble website account, um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, our, our support group or uh, anyone in our sales group uh, can, can help get you registered, but it's uh, it's it's pretty simple sign-up process. Um, Sam, I think maybe all. something interesting to point out that we can't necessarily demo here live uh, is that this entire site is mobile friendly. So if you're out working in the field and you need to perform, you know, a quick inverse between two locations or any sort of calculation searches, um, you can do all of that right on your mobile phone and your mobile web browser. Um, it'll essentially be the exact same functionality, but allow you to, you know, work with it more in the field away from your desk. Right. Um, and actually on the, on, we, we, you can't really demo it because we're uh, we're doing this from from PCs right here. But if you look at the lower right hand uh, side of the screen, you'll see a little icon, a little mobile phone icon. Um, it will either look like a mobile phone or a little laptop, and that will tell you uh, which uh, version of the view you're looking at right now. Um, so, because of all the devices that are out there in the world, the the form will try to figure out what you're browsing it on and suit that to what you're looking at. If you're on a, say, maybe a, a say a tablet with a really big screen, um, maybe you're more comfortable looking at the, uh, the, the PC type layout. Uh, you can click that button down there to toggle between the mobile layout and the PC style layout. Uh, but thanks for, thanks for pointing that out, Jeff. That's a, that's a good yeah. thing to make sure we're clear on. Um, now I'm going to come back here to uh, where, where we left off with GeoCalc Online Professional Services. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning that everything that we can do here in the public facing version of this database, we can also do on a corporate installation. Um, so this, this uh, can be and has been uh, fully customized for anyone to deploy within their own private cloud environment. So if you have a, uh, say a, a cloud behind firewall type type situation uh, in internal uh, installations this this everything that we've done in our public facing version can be uh, put over onto uh, that that uh, sort of on-premises cloud if you will um, you're able in that uh, in that mode um, you're able to let's get powerpoints season up on me here there we go uh, you're able to customize everything in the database um, so you can have your own uh, enterprise specific uh, coordinate systems definitions folder schemes for how things are arranged um, you're able to have a complete uh, uh, corporate branding available so it doesn't doesn't have to have our our logo on it um, things things like that um, you manage your own users and logins uh, with uh, with your internal uh, credentials and things like that. So we we have done these installations already uh, for for folks. They are out in the world uh, on uh, several cloud systems now. So uh, originally GeoCalc Online uh, was uh, rolled out um, in our our own backend was on the Amazon cloud. Um, we have transitioned that over uh, to be on the Azure cloud. Uh, we have done uh, corporate installations of these on both of those systems, and as well, you know, other other cloud systems out there. It's it's uh, it's designed to be installed here for us uh, on on the public facing internet, um, but it uh, is also very capable of being set up uh, for your uh, your your internal cloud deployments, if you will. Um, so it can it can do these things uh, in addition to other backend type coordinate conversion. Uh, processes. So um, there's there's a lot here that can be done with this. And if if this is something that you think would be interesting to you, um, please please reach out to us, and uh, we can we can discuss how that uh, how that gets uh, in, set up and installed uh, in in your corporate cloud type environment. Um, so I think Sammy. we're. Uh, 
I'm sorry, go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to say we had a couple questions come in again on accessing the site after the trial period. So I thought I would elaborate on that just a little bit. So once this trial period is over that Sam referred to, um, the search functionality will still be fully accessible to anybody on the web. You can go to the site, perform your search, and that's that. Then if you're someone with a Blue Marble account, you'll have access to um, all of the action. So Sam showed us looking at WKT, GML, printing, all that stuff. If you pay for a subscription or a part of a geographic calculator order, that is when you would have um, full access to the point-to-point -point calculator as well. And the, um, so the, the trial periods here, we're, we're being a little bit vague about uh, how, how long this initial period uh, of, of everybody can come in and, and do conversions and stuff like that is. Um, we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of waiting to see how this is going to go. Um, what, uh, what we do have for decision uh, is that uh, it, will be, it will definitely be free for anyone to use who is associated with a geographic calculator order um, through, uh, uh, through 2021. Um, that's a uh, that's a very new uh, new decision to come out on this service, um, but our initial trial period is anyone can take advantage of any of it. Um, where that's going to step back is it's going to go for our geographic calculator users um, for for a longer uh, trial period, um, and beyond that, um, we're we're waiting to see where it's going to go. Um, if you have any questions about uh, you know long long term use of it and things like that, definitely feel free to uh, to reach out to us. Um, you can uh, you can inquire with our orders team uh, or our tech support team uh, or if, if you have a sales rep that you are uh, familiar working with um, please please feel free to reach out to them um, now let's uh, uh, I think there's a couple more questions here coming in I'm trying to keep track of the questions and talk at the same time so forgive me if I'm if I'm missing anything we're gonna find tooth comb through this uh, uh, afterwards um, Sam here's a good one asking. for you Oop, that was what I was gonna throw your way okay sorry uh, Brett is asking, uh, what checks are available after transformation has happened? Um, so after uh, the, the transformation has happened, um, if you want to check the, the converted coordinates um, and validate those against um, something else, um, typically um, where we've, we've sort of gotten the most interest from, from folks uh, right now is that they're using this to check something they've done somewhere else, um, such as a geographic calculator desktop, or say the global mapper uh, coordinate conversion tool that's that's found in there. Um, with uh, let me see if I can hop out of the slideshow real quick and get back to our conversion form. Um, you'll notice as I'm I'm clicking some of these various functions, um, the coordinates go between red and black uh, sometimes. So a, a red state on the on the coordinates indicates that something's been messed with on on the interface. So something is out of whack. Um, once we uh, uh, select uh, here, I've, I've gone back to the same coordinate systems, but if I'm moving between coordinate systems and there's a transformation involved, anytime you change anything, so you go back and say select a different transform or you uh, change the coordinate system, change the formatting, anything like that, you're going to see everything light up red on the coordinates and it will only go back to black once you uh, hit calculate to resolve uh, everything you see on screen. Um, Right now, that, um, that, that is pretty much uh, what, what's going on here. Um, as we go, go forward, we're probably going to be adding additional functions to this. Um, you know, a few folks have asked about uh, file conversions and things like that. Um, this, what, what you see on this form right now is, uh, is what it is doing. We're eyeballing this uh, as, we, as we move into the future for what else do we want to put in here? You know, do, do folks want to do file conversions? Do folks want to play with LiDAR on a, on a cloud service and things like that? So we have a lot of, a lot of questions about where this is going. Um, this is our first steps towards uh, making some cloud accessible products uh, to, do, to do conversion. Um, freeing you up from the you know, traditional desktop environment in your corporate uh, installations. Um, this is something that folks have been asking for this year. Um, you know, like Jeff said, if you're if you happen to be on a survey site um, out in the field and you want to just quick double check something, um, you pull out your phone and and do a conversion. Um, whether it's you you need to have somebody have some simple access to you know view your your customized systems or do some simple uh, point conversion. Um, 
and they're not somebody that already has a geographic calculator installed or some other conversion utility, um, you know, such as the the coordinate converter and, and global mapper and things like that. Um, so this this is uh, I, I would suggest not to not to view this as the the end all of this. This is uh, the beginning of an evolution of uh, of some new tools that that we're going to have available. And let's see. I've been trying to keep up here with uh, with the questions coming in. Do you see any questions we haven't gotten to yet, Jeff? I think we got to the majority of them, and you know we'll go ahead and follow up if we missed any here. We'll follow up with you directly. But I think we got to all the major ones, Sam. Okay, sounds good. Um, in that case, um, if you have any further questions uh, going forward, please feel free to reach out uh, to our, our sales team, uh, orders at bluemarblegeo.com, our tech support team, uh, geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com. Um, trials of our downloadable tools are available at the link on the bottom of the screen. This is obviously available simply right off of, uh, right off of our website with no download needed. Um, we're curious to see how folks are, uh, uh, are going to start using this. Um, we'd love to hear from you if, you if you think this is a useful tool or if there's some things that you'd like to see added to it. Um, like I said, this is, uh, this is some first steps in the evolution of GeoCalc Online, um, and, and we're pretty excited about it. So uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, thanks, Jeff, for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sam. It's great as always. Okay, and uh, thanks everybody for attending, and we'll see you next time. Take care.